Hey guys, welcome to the EKG Guy. Welcome if this is your first time. We're going to look at Brugada syndrome today, okay, specifically type 1. So this is what we'll go through here. We'll go through the EKG and kind of look at the different patterns that we can see in Brugada syndrome. Before we get started, I want to uh, make you aware and thank you uh, for making us the largest, fastest growing EKG community in the world. On Facebook alone, we have now over 400,000 people that are following us, so we're really grateful for all you do, uh, your support. And if you could just like this video, that really helps us a lot. Uh, and just leave a comment if you find these videos helpful. We'd really appreciate it. And on our Facebook page, we post multiple times a day different questions. So if you're interested in practice and kind of connecting with a community that's interested in EKG and learning together, I would recommend going over there. All you have to do is search the EKG guy on Facebook and you'll find that. Okay, here's a few samples of different questions that we ask and uh, multiple ones. So. Uh, Take a moment to like this video, leave a comment if you find the videos helpful, and uh, we'll get started on Brugada syndrome. All right, so here we have a 28-year-old Asian male presenting following a syncopal episode, presenting to the ED, and now feeling quite well, ready to go home, and uh, here's his EKG that he presents with. Okay, so a syncopal meeting, they passed out, uh, now he's doing okay in your emergency department. This is the EKG we see here. And the main pattern we want to discuss today is this Brugada pattern, okay, or Brugada syndrome. Where we get the syndrome is where we have the pattern plus the risk of sudden cardiac death, okay? So the syndrome comes from both the pattern that we'll discuss on the EKG and then the risk of sudden cardiac death, okay? So it's important to identify these patients because A, we mentioned that they're at risk for sudden cardiac death, and this tends to be a functional mutation or mutations, more than one, okay, in the absence of overt structural heart disease and the EKG pattern. This is an autosomal dominant sodium channelopathy. So it affects the sodium channels and is more common in males. Now, what the Brugada pattern that we'll look at is pretty much a pseudo right bundle branch block and the persistence of ST elevation in V1 through V3, okay? So we'll specifically be focusing on V1, V2, and V3, okay? And the main pattern you'll see in these different types is a pseudo right bundle branch block, meaning it looks like a right bundle branch block, and we have ST elevation in V1 through V3, okay? Now, type one is the most common pattern that we'll see. So that's this one here, okay? And this is actually the one that we end up seeing here. So let's look at the EKG and go through type one first. So the EKG, what we see here is a sinus rhythm, okay? Our patient has upright P waves in the lateral leads, uh, also some of the inferior leads, so upright P waves that have a similar morphology throughout, and the ventricular rate, if we were to calculate it, would be between 60 and 100 in our adult male patient. Here's our rate, ventricular rate of 83 that the machine gives us, and that is accurate. So this is a normal sinus rhythm, okay? But the focus we want to get to is this uh, Brugada pattern that we're seeing here, okay? And this is the ones in V1 through V3. So as you can see here, and the, you'll see some discrepancy between books, but um, the main things that we'll get at are, it's a pseudo right bundle branch block, okay, with the persistence of the ST elevation in V1 through V3. So those are the main leads we're looking at, okay? And it should be a patient that presents that's young and maybe has a family history of these uh, because it's autosomal dominant, meaning it can transmit um, across generations and uh, a syncope event. So Brugada 1, okay, or this first pattern, what we tend to see is J-point elevation uh, that's greater than two or more, okay, two millimeters. So you'll see here I have A, B, C, D. This I've taken from our book, our course that uh, we have where we specifically break down each one of these. So I thought it'd be helpful to put here. So uh, this point A here is showing that there's ST elevation or J-point elevation, okay, and you can see that highlighted there. So I'll just erase this here, but that red arrows or these things are showing the J point elevation here at A. So J point elevation greater than or equal to two millimeters. 
is what we see. We see a coved type or morph or a coved morphology of the STT wave segment. Okay, and that's that con this con uh, this sort of uh, sloping that cove sloping that you see here. Okay, an upward convex sloping of this of the ST segment. So this portion here that would be point B is the coved ST. Uh, T segment, okay, and that's different than types two and three, where we see more of a saddleback. So these two types, we see more of a saddleback um, STT wave segment, okay, meaning that it has that segment that almost looks like this, okay, and that's that portion B that we see in both of them, okay. Now in C, what we see here is that this portion, the T wave is dropping below the baseline so meaning you have a descending terminal st elevation okay so the terminal portion of the st segment is descending below baseline and you get this negative t wave so that's a negative t wave okay so that's pretty much what you see in type 1. And remember, this is leads V1 through V3. And if you look at our sample here in the EKG, we have that ST segment. Okay, it's kind of cove type, meaning it's coming down, it's descending, and it's going below our baseline for sure. Okay, and that's what you can see. So here's another example. You can see that throughout. Okay, you can see here in V1 and V2 that we have that RSR prime pattern. Okay, that kind of represents that pseudo right bundle branch block that we can see and that how we initially define this. Okay, so that's uh, type one. Hopefully that makes sense. Now I'll just run through the other few so you have an idea of what they are. Okay, so again, when we look at type two, that A, okay, is a J point elevation of again, two millimeters. Okay, the J point is the end of our QRS complex. So if you have our QRS complex, okay, and the start of the T ST segment, so that's this point, okay, and we tend to measure ST elevation at that point, okay, so that's where we'll measure ST elevation, and uh, if someone's in a uh, exercise stress test and we're looking at the EKG, we'll sometimes measure uh, a few or about 40 to 80 milliseconds after that, okay, so. In type two, we said that we have J point elevation of at least two millimeters. We have that saddleback morphology, okay, as we discussed, as you can see there in B. So B here is that morphology that we discussed. And C, um, what we have here is that terminal ST elevation. So this at C, you can see here that it's above one millimeter. So terminal ST elevation is at least one millimeter okay and that will help differentiate it from uh, what we see in uh, type 3 so remember that and then D for this portion here is that we have a positive T wave okay notice that this T wave in D is positive okay so that's important when we look at type 3 so this was type 2 type 3 we'll put here Okay, type three, this is where you get a little uh, dicey on where, where you read. Now, uh, the J point tends to have less of an elevation than we see in two. Okay, some say that it should be less than two and some say above two and so forth. So we'll say that you tend to have a less ST elevation than in type two. Okay, and B, this is the same morphology, so we'll just put morphology here as we described in that, and that's that saddleback ST segment uh, morphology that we see there. And then we mentioned in three, um, this is where we'll see a little difference. Notice that the ST segment elevation is not very prominent, that terminal ST elevation. So this is the terminal ST elevation is less than one millimeter. So that's different than you see in type two. Okay, remember type two, it was at least uh, one millimeter or more. And then again, uh, that D here is you have that positive T wave, okay, very similar. So the main differences between those uh, in between two and three tend to be this 
and this, okay? Those are the key difference. But you can clearly see this most common type, type one, clearly stands out. And that would, this is the more common one, the one that you should focus on and uh, be aware of, okay? And again, JP or ST segment elevation, at least two millimeters, the cove type ST segment, okay? So maybe I'll erase this so you can see it just again here. Okay, the cove type ST segment elevation, the descending terminal L, uh, ST elevation. So notice it descending, going below the baseline. That's different than the other ones. And a negative T wave. Okay, that's different from type uh, two and three. So again, some key features. This is the most common one, type one. This is the one that you should be aware of and keep. Um, you know, a lookout for, okay? So again, young patients tend to be Asian predominance, actually, um, but again, can occur, can occur in different ethnicities. Uh, this is someone that presents with maybe a brief syncopal episode. They come to you, they're feeling well, ready to go home. On the EKG, you notice this, okay? So this is inherited arrhythmia disorder. Remember, the syndrome is a result of the pattern plus sudden cardiac death. They're at risk for sudden cardiac death with these, okay? So this is important to be aware of. Uh, this is a functional mutation, and these, tend to, these patients tend to have absence of overt structural heart disease, okay? So that's one thing to uh, and be aware of. This is an inherited arrhythmia disorder. We said it's autosomal dominant, a uh, sodium channelopathy. It tends to be uh, the SCN 5A mutation, okay, so I can write that here, SCN5A uh, mutation. It's a sodium channel that's being affected. Uh, this is more common in males, so keep that in mind, our male patient here. All right, and uh, this tends to be a dynamic pattern. It may appear with rest, sleep, an increase in vagal tone, fever, if you give the patient ch uh, sodium channel blockers or vagal tonic agents, okay? We mentioned three different patterns with type one here, the one that we saw in this EKG being the most common, okay? So findings in this interpretation, I know we focus on Brugada syndrome, but sinus rhythm, normal sinus rhythm in this case, uh, and this Brugada syndrome type one. Okay, hopefully uh, that makes sense. Now again, I just want to bring you all to uh, the attention of our EKG coding reference. Again, um, we do place the uh, different clinical disorders. So as we just discussed, Brugada syndrome would be under here. So you can look for Brugada syndrome. And this is our EKG reference that you can have handy on the go, meaning on your phone and be able to reference it, whether you're in clinic, whether you're on the go, uh, seeing a patient before just to brush up on things or even to study for an exam. And, uh, you know, I certainly uh, need these reminders despite doing this every day. So um, this is how you access it. We've put this together for our fellows here at Mayo Clinic. Uh, and now it's kind of spread uh, to our techs and uh, residents and nursing and so and so forth. So uh, we really want you to, uh, this is more of a standardization, but for our uh, curriculum here, but I also want to provide it for you because I think this is helpful and we're here to help each other out. So what you do to get access is you go to this link here, okay? And so I'm not gonna read this link. You can simply put it in, I can put it below in the comments, uh, put in your email. So you'll come to this page, go to your email, put it there. Okay, this is yours. So um, make sure you do that. But then you're going to use my password, this one here, okay, to put in to there. Okay, so use my password so you get free access. Uh, you can use that on the go. Okay, once you click submit, you'll then be taken to a page where you can then confirm your email and once you've confirmed your email you'll have free access okay you won't have to confirm your email every time but when you go to the link again use my password okay um, and hopefully you find this useful we continue to update this uh, we'll include different images as you can see patterns that you can just kind of reference and be able to know there is a lot of information there okay so um, I think you'll find it quite useful. I know uh, even our advanced, even our cardiologist uh, will use this when we interpret, making sure we're all on the same page with our interpretations, okay? So 
that's about it i want to make you aware some of you have asked about lectures so here are lectures okay all you have to do is go to www.ekg.md you'll see a number of lectures okay um, we tend to also put them here on youtube as well and uh, if you want some lectures that are more probably i'd say high quality our ekg course this comes with a book uh, that you can find there so click there take a look at it watch the video see what we have check out what those videos offer and what the book offers as well okay we have both the pocket size and the bigger version of the books available okay selling very fast so thank you all for your support uh, we really appreciate it and thank you for leaving comments below uh, and liking this that really helps us and encourages us to continue what we're doing all right, so that's all I have. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for making us the largest, fastest growing EKG community in the world.